And you used to have Scotch girls all come down the coast as the heron come down. So the fishing boats used to come down the coast as well. All the Scotch boats and um, what have you. But uh, the, the, one of the biggest things, there was always rivalry between Norfolk and Suffolk Heron people. And what they'd do, if one was drifting down, the other one would shoot in front of it and try and take all the heron. Now, yeah, it's a bird's eye train used to run through at the bottom of the river test. From Vauxhall from Station, Vauxhall Station to, the to, to the fish market. Yeah, there was. I can remember that mark they used there. Run across the bottom of the bridge. Be a train. Yeah, yeah. You used to have to stop all the traffic for it. I can remember that well. Yeah, I used to go to the local fish market. And I can remember the ladies doing the heron on the quay. And the boats right across the river. Almost halfway across. Because I set my dad. Oh, what are they? And he knew all the... Fraser Bar and all them names, I didn't know, but all the books had their names, and the Yarmouth was TRIH, I think, yeah, yeah, I remember all that. <laughs> I'm old enough. Our father used to take my brother and myself down to the quay when the fishing boots were in to see all the Scots ladies catch and uh, gut and the fish, and then, like most people in our street, we never had a bathroom. So we used to go down to the public baths that were called the slipper baths and you'd pay to have a bath. And, but when the Scots ladies were down during the gutting of the fish, it was very hard to get, get a bath because that would be packed out with the Scots ladies. <laughs> the speed in which they got a heron, what if you take two, three seconds per heron? If you, you know, some of the really good ones, they used to gut them as quick as anything. I used to sing as they worked. Um, they've got welly boots on and uh, great big uh, clothes, you know, <laughs> and heads, their heads were all covered up. Yeah. But they, um, they used to sing as they worked. Yeah, well, for quite a few years, my mother used to take in a husband and wife who came from Fraserborough, and the, the wife, her name was Nan, she used to um, be in charge of the Gutton Girls. And her husband, he used to uh, be a fish buyer. He used to buy all the heron. And um, they used to be at Oz for three months, from September to December. So that was good for the economy in Yarmouth. But um, that was hard work for them. And, you know, really bad on their hands. And the thing is, when if you um, sit on the bus next to them, they really did used to stink of fish. Big time, really. There wasn't too many jobs available when I left school. One of my friends was already working there. I knew where the place was and I thought that'll do for the time being. And just started, got to start straight away. Because not many people wanted to do it. The fishing wasn't completely finished by then. There was still some Scottish books coming down in 1953 that was getting towards the end of the fishing hole. So, uh, yeah, we were still making plenty of baskets for the fishing industry, plenty. You wasn't allowed anywhere near making a crown for at least two years because the material was so thick to make the big border on it that uh, you just couldn't handle it. Wrists weren't strong enough. Sneak in on a Saturday morning and have a go on your own. That was the only way you could learn that. You'd seen, you know how to do it by watching all the others. But make practice make perfect, I reckon, so that was the idea. 